Hello friends, welcome to the video series on interview question for SQL PL SQL developers. In this video, we'll see what is Pragma Autonomous Transaction and the key points to remember from interview point of view. So before starting with Pragma Autonomous Transaction, let me take you through few scenarios to understand the transaction control language commands so that it is easy for us to understand the Pragma Autonomous Transaction and what is the need to have a Pragma Autonomous Transaction when we have a normal transaction in place. Okay, let us start with our scenario one. So what I'm going to do is I'm just creating a table T with one column called N of number data type. I'm inserting a value one into this table. Then I'm inserting two, then I'm inserting three. So I, now I'm executing the TCL command commit. The moment you execute the commit statement, all the changes you've done till the previous transaction will get permanently saved. So from this point, anyone who connects to the database or to this particular schema queries this table will be able to see all the values like 1, 2 and 3. Fine. Now let us see the scenario 2. I am creating the table t, then I am inserting value 1, inserting value 2, inserting value 3. Now I am executing the transaction control language command rollback. So the rollback will revert all the changes you have done till the previous transaction. Okay. So from this point, anyone who connects to this table or anyone who connects to this schema and tries to query this table will not see any data because all the data are reverted back. Now let us see scenario 3. I am creating the table T. Then I am executing the statement save point A. Then I am doing the insertion like insert into T value of 1. Then I am executing the statement save point B. Now I am inserting 2 into this table. Now I am executing save point C. Then I am inserting 3 into this table. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to execute the TCL command roll back to save point B. The moment you execute this statement, any changes you have done till the save point B will be reverted back. So that means any changes you have done before this is still not committed or rolled back. It is available for you to commit or roll back. So now if I execute the statement commit, any changes done before the save point B will get committed. So from this point, anyone who connects to this schema and queries this table will see the value 1 in this table. Okay. So now let us see one more scenario. Okay. So here the expectation is I'm creating the table and I'm inserting value 1, inserting value 2 and inserting value 3. So after completing the transaction, the expectation is I want only the value 2 to be committed whereas 1 and 3 has to be reverted back. The expectation is after completion of transaction, if I try to query from the table, I should have only 2 is committed whereas the 1 and 3 should be rolled back. How to achieve this transaction? See in a normal transaction, it is not possible to achieve this because either we have only 3 options. We can commit the entire thing or we can roll back the entire thing or we can roll back to some point and commit whatever is there uh, before those changes. Then how to achieve these type of functionality? Okay, so achieve this functionality, we can use the autonomous transaction. Now let me show you how to you how to write an autonomous transaction to achieve this functionality. First, let me show you the code. Then in the next slide, I will explain you how this piece of code will get executed. Okay. The first thing anyway, like we need the table to be created. Yeah, I'm creating the table here. Then I'm inserting one. Now the expectation is the insertion two, that is the value, whatever I'm inserting as part of the second insert statement has to be treated bit separately because the two alone has to be committed. Whereas the rest of the things has to be revert back for that. What we are doing instead of writing the DML as it is, I am writing this as part of a block. And then I am saying pragma autonomous transaction. So by specifying the keyword pragma, we are instructing the compiler to execute this block of code as a separate child transaction rather than as part of the main transaction. So what will happen is the insert will happen and this piece of block will get executed as a child transaction. Then any subsequent insertion will happen as part of the main transaction. So at the end, when I do a rollback, this will affect only the main transaction not the child transaction. At this time, when you select from the table, you will see only two. Let me explain you a bit clearly in the next slide. The key point here is that by specifying the pragma autonomous transaction, you are instructing the compiler that 
those piece of code or the code which is resides in that particular block has to be executed as a separate transaction not as part of the main transaction now let us see how this piece of code will get actually executed okay let's start from here so i'm creating the table and i'm, I'm doing an insertion the moment a block encounters the keyword pragma autonomous transaction then what oracle will do is it invokes a new child transaction this child transaction is part of your main transaction but it is independent of your main transaction so in this case this is your main transaction from here it invokes a child transaction and it continues from the child transaction so what happens here is that the insert one will happen this is part of your parent transaction then it it creates a new child transaction then it continues with the child transaction so inside the child transaction it insert the value to then it commit the chain the moment you issued a commit inside the child transaction the value whatever part of your child transaction will get committed keep it in mind this commit will not affect your main transaction the child transaction and your parent transaction are completely independent of each other once the child transaction completes it the control will return back to the main transaction and continue here so at this point we are inserting three after that when i execute the rollback statement the rollback statement will revert back all the changes done in your parent transaction not in your child transaction so your child transaction and parent transaction are completely independent of each other so from this point onwards whoever queries this table will be able to see only two in this table so let me again uh, reiterate the point an autonomous transaction is a child transaction invoked from a parent transaction and this is not a parallel transaction instead it continue as part of your parent transaction so normally how it will execute is whenever we execute the, this entire thing continuously first it will start with parent transaction then it will continue the child transaction it completes the child transaction then the control will come back to parent transaction then it completes the parent transaction this is how it will get executed the blue arrow here shows the components of your parent transaction and the orange arrow shows the thing whatever happens as part of your child transaction okay so here is the documentation from oracle autonomous transaction as an independent transaction it is not a dependent on child it is an independent transaction started from another transaction that normally we will call it as a parent transaction another key point to be noted here is we have to put a commit or rollback within autonomous transaction otherwise you will get a runtime error only after completing your child transaction the transaction can come back to your parent transaction okay so where and all this autonomous transaction can be defined an anonymous block can be an autonomous a procedure can be an autonomous transaction procedure a function a trigger a method what we write as part of the types can also be autonomous okay so here are the few key points to be remembered from interview point of view as i already mentioned autonomous transaction is a child transaction that is started from an another transaction generally we will call that main transaction as a parent transaction child transaction and parent transaction are completely independent of each other it is not dependent it is a continuous transaction the only thing you can keep it in mind is child transaction is invoked from parent transaction and it gets executed and then the control will come back to parent transaction and it gets completed very important point child transaction must end with a commit or rollback before the control goes back to the main transaction okay so in the next video we'll see about a real time use case where we will use this uh, autonomous transaction okay so if you have any questions to be answered please post it in the comment section or you can drop to this mail id but before that you can just browse through all the questions posted as part of the subscriber question or also as part of the interview questions if you are not able to find your question here please write back to me i'll be happy to record and post as a new video if you have learned something new please like this video subscribe and stay tuned for new feature video interview question as well practical question and concept videos and thanks a lot for watching this video please click the bell icon if you want to receive the instant notification whenever new videos are uploaded into this channel thank you